Veronica Veronica Clary is live at the White House tonight with a closer look at, at, at the, the changing, the quick changing cycle. Veronica? Jim and Sean, you know, it's true. Every 24 hours, a new headline. But recently, that Rob Porter story and scandal, that was very unusual. It stayed in the headline for over a week. It was about nine days. And then the horrible shooting in Florida occurred. Now, obviously, that took over the headlines and has really stayed in the headlines ever since. Uh, but a shocking report out of the White Washington Post said that one person anonymously from inside the White House, they actually looked at that shooting as a reprieve from all of the negative headlines that the White House was sort of dealing with uh, and really pointing to, I think, the unusual nature of how long the Porter st story stayed in the headline when what we've become accustomed to is a much faster news cycle. Now, here on 5 at 630, we love to get to the pulse of the people. So we went on the streets to ask what you think about how quickly this news cycle turns. Take a listen. Yeah, it's too fast. <laughs> it's too fast. It's, it's so little information shared. It's sound bites, and it just really doesn't serve. I think everything you know. right now is moving at the speed of social media, which is always quick it's rapid it's easily ingestible it's short um and i think that's just kind of how people are getting used to ingesting information now it just happens and then it's gone and then there's something else that pops up and it's how do you even have a conversation about what's going on when you don't have um you know follow-ups to events like that like i think in two weeks the the school shooting in in orlando is going to be over and we'll be on to something else and then what's what's really happened is is nothing we're going through so many different stories there's a lot that have a lot more significance to a lot of people and they want that to stay in the news cycle a lot more so i think it goes a long way to keep maybe more of the tragedies in sight than just kind of rotating them out you have to keep up especially if it's an ongoing news news thing and not let it die but yeah, it's, it's true what you're saying is if uh, until the next event comes along. I spoke with Richard Levick. He's a crisis communications expert. and He brought up some really interesting points, though, because there are stories that do maintain the headlines. Like, for example, just the, the idea of the Me Too movement, how long we have seen that sort of sustain, even if it does come and go. And he differentiated the difference between the power of journalists and the power of grassroots efforts like we've never seen before. Take a listen to his insight. We talked for half a century about John F. Kennedy and his paramours. And yet, just a few weeks ago, we had the headline, the president and the porn star, and that disappeared from the media within four days. It's absolutely remarkable. However, if a story does get past that first wave, if it gets picked up by the grassroots, then the focus is all going to be on what did you do during the crisis? Just simply kicking the can down the road by thinking it's going to go away, eventually is not a good strategy. So there he's just talking about the fact that if it does maintain that life and you don't handle it the right way and you're in the public eye, it can really be catastrophic for you. It's just a different way the cycle is moving forward. But some really interesting insight because there are stories that do last, of course, but it's just which ones sustain and which ones do we just kind of forget and move on from. It's changing. Back to you, Jim and Sean. Ronica Cleary at the White House. Thank you, Ronica.